This, my friends, is a zucchini blossom, and I just picked it fresh from my garden like five minutes ago. And this ingredient right here is a seasonal delicacy all around the world, but it actually has a lot of significance to me in the evolution of Pro Home Cooks. And in today's video, I'm gonna explain the reasons why. So the other day I was walking through the garden, past the zucchini plants, and I saw all the blossoms growing. It's pretty hard to miss these beautiful things right here, but I just kept walking. I didn't really think too much of it. And it wasn't until a few days later that it dawned on me that these zucchini blossoms growing on those plants right there was actually the first thing that I ever cooked on camera. So I've got a few squash plants right here. Actually, you can see this one is kind of droopy, which I had no idea why. I thought it was a watering issue. But then when you get a little closer, you can see how the actual stem this is the base of the plant is all eaten up. And this is something called a squash vine borer, which is a moth. It lays eggs in there. And then you've got like a little grub eating this thing from the inside out, killing off a lot of the nutrients it needs. So things are still growing, but this is on its end. So what I'm doing is just planting more cucumbers and squash rather than trying to save it. And then over here, I've got some beauties that aren't affected. So when you take a closer look, zucchini plants and squash plants are kind of spiky, which is not so fun when you're digging through. But you've got two different types of flowers. You've got the male, which shoots up from this stem. Pick that weed. <laughs> and this will never have a zucchini on it. It's just a flower. And then over here, this would be considered a female. So you have the flower on the end, which then turns into an actual zucchini. So you can see there's actually three, one, two, three growing right here. Oh, and then this thing, damn. That's gotta be picked right there. Now you can pick these off and you can use those too. And then of course, we're gonna take these males right off there and collect a bunch for a really fun recipe that I'm whipping up. So before we harvest and get into this next recipe, I feel like I need to explain a little bit about how we got here. Cause a lot has changed in the last year and things have been moving fast. And I really haven't had a minute to tell you about this new location. So it was almost 10 years ago to the day. I was living in Brooklyn, in Williamsburg, and I had a rooftop garden, and I was growing zucchini, I was growing tomatoes, a bunch of things. And at that time, I was struggling to figure out how to put out a cooking show. I really wanted a cooking show, but I didn't know where to start. I don't actually know what I'm doing right now. So finally, after thinking about it way too much, I just went up to the roof and said, I'm gonna start filming a show. And what was growing at the time and what was inspiring me in the moment were these zucchini blossoms. So I entered into my first cooking video ever, which was a bit insane. My brother got involved about halfway through. It turned into like a music video at the end, but the actual recipe takeaway was a stuffed zucchini blossom. And that started a crazy 10 year journey of filming different styles of cooking shows, learning new recipes, building out kitchen studios, and ultimately learning how to make a show from scratch. And about two years ago, when the pandemic hit, I had a baby and it made sense to leave the city behind. So we moved out to Long Island where my wife is from. And I was struggling a bit at that time because I had my kitchen studio still in Brooklyn that I built from scratch and I was still holding on to a lot of attachment there. And I was actually commuting back and forth from Long Island to Brooklyn, which is just an absolute disaster, especially when you're hauling food both ways. So over the course of that year of commuting into the city, it was starting to become very clear that things just weren't working out at all. And for me, the obvious next step was just recreate exactly what I have, because that's what I knew, this Brooklyn studio, and bring it to Long Island. But that wasn't working out either, because as I was looking for commercial studio Brooklyn style space here in Long Island, there really wasn't much available. So I had to rethink things. I had to go back to the drawing board and I started tuning into what I actually wanted. And I realized that there were new possibilities. I could create something different and something that was more in tune to my inspiration, which brings me to this place right here. Now, when I first saw it, the kitchen definitely stood out to me. I loved the natural light. I saw a lot of potential there, but was almost more inspiring was the actual property. When I walked in the back, I saw chickens, which wasn't even advertised on the listing. And 
I'm like, okay, sign me up. But it was pretty rough at the time. Right here, this garden was the only place they were growing and it was like completely overgrown. So I've spent pretty much the last year doing what I love, which is transforming this place to kind of like a food paradise with the goal of growing as many fruits and veggies as physically possible. And it has been a journey year one. Gardening is tough, but I'm learning a lot and I'm excited to just keep growing year after year. And I'm just pumped to be back in the garden after a 10 year hiatus from that Brooklyn rooftop. So today I'm going to be harvesting these flowers and the zucchini and a few other things from the garden. And rather than making those fried squash blossoms, that's like the classic thing that everyone makes. I'm gonna try something brand new, something that looked awesome, which is a traditional Mexican squash blossom soup. So I got the blossoms, the zucchini. There's a few other things I can grab for this soup. This measly little bell pepper, small, but good for the base. Definitely this cilantro, hallelujah. That will probably be a garnish. And then we can grab some of these onions. Let's see how big they are. Okay, three will be perfect. Back to the kitchen. So here is the star of the show. Now I'm making a Mexican soup called crema de flor de calabaza, which basically means a creamy pumpkin flower soup. These zucchini blossoms being in the same family as pumpkin. And what I love about this soup is that the blossoms are really the main focus. So the prep on this is very simple. We're just gonna remove the stigma, pop that out. And then these little pieces around the edge, they're not the best texture. So you can just pop those out as well. And then I'll do that on all of these. So now that the blossoms are prepped, I'm going to work on these aromatics. I got a few of these smaller onions. I'm just going to chop off the bulbs, slice them in half, and then cut them into thin slices. And then for this mini little bell pepper, I'll just chop around the core and the seeds and then cut those into slices just like the onion. And then finally I'll pop off a clove of garlic and thinly slice it up. Oh, you know what? I forgot something in the garden. I'll be right back. Gotta have some spice if we're cooking Mexican. I don't even know what these chilies are, but I have a feeling they are gonna add a kick. Ooh. <coughs> oh, little kick there. You know what? I'm gonna slice up the green onion tops of the onion as well and add those to the aromatics. So these are our base aromatics. So I've got a larger saucepan right here, which will be fine since we're not making a massive soup. This will definitely take care of our needs. I'm gonna put that on a medium heat. I'll add in a little olive oil as well as some butter for flavor. And I'll dump in all of my aromatics, sprinkle in some salt, and just start slowly cooking those down. I'm not trying to get too much color. It's really just to soften them and build a ton of flavor for the first layer of this soup. So of course, every recipe is gonna have its variations. And when researching this soup, I saw a lot of different versions, all within the same concept of really making these flowers the star base of the soup. But I did really like the addition of some fresh corn, especially now, corn is just coming into season. So I'm just gonna take it right off the cob. So aromatics, ooh, nice and soft, slightly colored. That's what we're looking for. What I'm gonna do is add this corn right in there, since that doesn't need to cook down so long since it's super fresh. Give that a stir. And now here's where things get crazy. We'll dump in all of these. Kind of wilt them down just like they were, you know, a leafy green or something of the sort. I mean, not often do you just cook with flowers. This is new to me. I've only fried these up, but we'll just cook them for probably two, three more minutes until they're soft. Now, when researching different recipes for these zucchini flowers, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but the main things you see are a classic Italian stuffed and fried blossom, which I've done plenty of times before, and then just different kinds of Mexican recipes, which I find really interesting that in Mexico, they're really taking advantage of these flowers. So this soup was a big one, but another very popular recipe for these blossoms are quesadillas. So what I'm gonna do is just reserve enough for one quesadilla so I can sample it. But basically they just saute down the blossoms, add some cheese, throw it on a tortilla. So we'll do that in a second. But for now, we will get back to this recipe. So everything's really cooked down nicely. Now, last night I was freaking out because I didn't have chicken stock. And then I realized I was actually butchering some chicken thighs. So I just took the three bones, put them in a pot and let them cook overnight. And I've got a really good flavored miniature stock, but that's all I need for this. Go in with the stock. We'll add a little bit of water on top of that. Now here's the crema part, a little bit of heavy cream. 
Wow. And then another ingredient that I saw in just a few recipes that I wanted to add are some tortillas, which shifts it a little bit more into that tortilla soup world. But I love the creaminess these add when everything's blended up. And I'll bring that up to a simmer and just cook it for probably, I don't think it needs long, maybe two, three minutes. And in the meantime, I'm just gonna saute up one of these mini zucchinis for a little garnish. So really now the goal is just to season. Definitely need some salt, some pepper. I'll infuse that seasoning and also just thicken it up slightly as it cooks for the next two, three minutes. As those tortillas start to cook down a little bit, they should thicken it up just a little more than this right now. These are the sauteed zucchini. A Little bit of crunch in there, a little bit of texture. Never hurt anyone. And then finally, some of that fresh cilantro. And that's it, my friends. It's taste test time. Oh my God. Oh my God. That is, that is wild. It almost tastes like a more refined corn chowder. You definitely get the corn chowder vibes from just the cream and the corn, but then there's this overall perfume and essence of zucchini, which in my mind just takes it right to the next level. It's so creamy from the tortillas that it almost tastes like there's cheese in there, but the creaminess doesn't weigh things down. Holy shit. that is that is fantastic. Will you just give this a sample? Here, I'll get you a new spoon. All right, I'm coming in hot, no thoughts. <laughs> just need another bite. <laughs> Right? What's the first thing that, that comes to you? The creaminess is so smooth and round. A lot of the creaminess comes from the tortillas, which is why I love that technique. Mm -hmm. But the zucchini flavor is just awesome. The flowers, it's different. It's yeah. more subtle. It is, yeah. Success. I'm just gonna go ahead. And, you know, I'll you can just take that. I'll leave you alone. You can just take that, because this is coming home with me for the fam. Do you hear this? Now we're off camera. We're still getting excellence. <laughs> It's so good, yeah. What do you, I was just sweating my ass off. This is so good. So the last thing I wanna do, very traditional quesadilla in Mexico, which I find fascinating, is this zucchini flour quesadilla. So basically I'm gonna take out a tortilla, I'll add the base of the aromatics and the zucchini flour, cover that with some cheese. I've got some Gruyere. That was the melting cheese I had on hand. And I'll fry that up in a pan with some butter and olive oil until it's crispy and melty on both sides. Unfortunately, I don't have a salsa for this, but <laughs> I have the, the first tomato from the garden, almost fully ripe. I'm just gonna like take a slice of that. Mm. All right, here we go. A squash blossom quesadilla. Oh my God, that's good. I thought there would be much more zucchini flavor in the blossom, but it's more a textural thing. You're not getting like an intense flavor from it. It's just this beautiful creaminess that I totally understand why this is a go-to quesadilla in Mexico. The melty cheese with the sauteed blossom. Fry it. Just pop a tomato yeah, right on that. Well. Like you don't really taste that much zucchini. You think it's gonna be an explosion, but it's more of this really, it's a mild, so mild. And it's about the texture, like you said, I think. When you look at it as a textural element, which I think in both of these dishes, that's really what it was providing. Yeah. Holy that is good. It's really tasty. I'll leave you to your thoughts. That, those are my thoughts. That's it. I think mission accomplished today. <laughs> I mean, my goal was really just to update you on the current state of where I'm at, what you can expect to see, what this new studio opens up is just a lot of transformation over the years to come. Like I'm planting fruit trees out there. I won't be getting fruit until my daughter's like six or seven, which is a crazy thought, but I really like that connection, literally putting roots into the ground. So wherever you joined in on this journey, I appreciate you tuning in and really we're just getting started. So stay tuned for just more craziness to come.